historical archives for the cultural heritage and the Oneida Nation tribe. Um, the history presentation program was created with our, our history program. Uh, we have monthly presentations that actually started in January, one topic a month, and this is my month. And I decided to do plans because I think the community as a whole has kind of lost contact and uh, information on the clan system, what clan we belong to. Uh, at Cultural Heritage, we have genealogy um, opportunities where you can go back and, and do your lineage with uh, uh, your ancestors. And one of the most famous questions is, what clan am I? Uh, there are no records kept with what clan the family belongs to. Um, unless you really do extensive research that goes back to New York or Canada and their families know what their grandmother or grandfather plan was. So hopefully we'll get a lot of information out to you. Um, it's listed as the Haudenosaunee or Oneontaaga clans. Oneontaaga is Oneida. And the Haudenosaunee is the word that, that constitutes all of the Six Nations. Uh, the, the agenda is, is welcome. I'm um, glad you're here to learn about the clans. Um, hopefully you'll get an idea of what clan you are, which clan you belong to, um, the roles and responsibilities of your clan or members of, of your family, really. Um, I'll be doing the presentation, uh, getting into the clans uh, the lower responsibility. Um, then we'll have a quick break and we'll get into the plan meeting rules, which will basically lead into next week uh, for holding an actual plan meeting, and that's the plan system. Uh, we also want to pick the topic or issue that we want to discuss as a plan for the, for the meeting and uh, questions and answers. <clears throat> What is a clan? A clan is, um, well, right, is a, a matrilineal society, which means it follows your mother's line. So, my mother is non-tribal, so that link between clanship is actually lost, and we'll get into uh, explanations of how you can reestablish a clan uh, with the adoption and ceremony. Um, but as far, as far as my clan, it actually is broken because my dad is tribal, my mom is not tribal, so I was adopted into the wolf clan and I have a wolf, wolf clan name as well. And then you go through ceremony for the naming, um, getting your own identity. Uh, your clan is, is inherited from your mother's clan, so this community as a whole is known as a turtle clan. Uh, the research that I've done with the migration from New York to Wisconsin back in the 1820s, majority of the people that came out at that time were from the Turtle Clan. Um, so if your mother, uh, grandmother was Turtle, you would also be Turtle, and your, your children would also follow that, that same clan. Uh, your clan is your family, and it's part of your identity. Um, the clans, even though it's we look at families now as, as mother, father, brother, sister, and uncle. Um, the clanship constitutes everybody in that clan. So my last name is Dockstader. I can also be a family member to Scandador's policies, um, any other any other last name. It does one name doesn't constitute a clanship. So there are various names within the clans. <clears throat> this slide will demonstrate um, the positions that there are in the clan. Um, there are chiefs, there are still current chiefs today. Uh, Bob Brown was presented at the, at the morning, morning uh, session. He's a Bear Clan chief. Uh, he grew up and lived in uh, the team's community, and he's been living here. He married. Uh, and a white woman from this community, and he follows the traditional um, teachings. So, if a, a white man marries, well, they have to marry a different 
plan. So they will automatically go into the, the woman's or the wife's uh, plan. And that's, that's why he's here in this community. Um, we have plan mothers, we have sub chiefs, and there's faith keepers, both male and female, that work hand in hand with the plan mother. The creation of the plans actually goes back to the, the creation story with the right-handed twin, which is also known as the creator. Um, he created the, the human beings, or Hongwe um, Hongwe, and gave them the responsibilities while they were here on Earth. Um, the beings became so populated in the villages that they began to not know who their family was. And there was confusion and um, disagreements. The elders in the communities were <clears throat> kind of unsettled with who, the, who their, their direct families were. So along with the, the disputes and arguments and fights within the families and the communities, the elders gathered together and um, had discussions on how they can fix or neutralize all of the, the fighting and disagreements within not only the community, but also to establish who their, their family were. Um, there was a young man that, that would go to the, these meetings and just listen to what was being, being mentioned with, with the elders. And he would just listen and take everything in, and one day he would um, speak up at a meeting and he had an idea of how he would be able to um, create the families or compare the families. And he spoke up at, at one of the meetings and he, he suggested that why can't families be created similar to the way, with the, way the, the bird family are or the animal family, um, the fish, uh, those separate families. Everything in creation was based on one title, a bird. You know, you got the eagle, the hawk, um, the various birds, the trees, you have the maple, the elm, the birch. Um, why can't they be established as that community or that family? Um, and one phrase that he says is, all these different kinds of things have a responsibility. They all have a place on this earth. Uh, which he had a really good idea. So the elders got together after after we mentioned that, and they thought about it, and they had questions for him as to how would you go and create the families, as you say, the various birds and, and animals. So he, he explained to them that he would go to the communities and the eldest women would be selected to go and not only do their chores and cook for, for their, their daily events or responsibilities and duties, but on specific days they would go into the, the wilderness and you know find something that's that's unusual. So the, the elders agreed to this. And they went to the communities and they gathered all the women and their families that wanted to go on this, this uh, excursion to see what was going to happen, how their, their families were going to be created. And they came across a, a river and there was a, he already said that they would be separated. He found a line, a grapevine, and threw it across the river and it got stuck in, in the rocks. And one by one, the families would go across and when the, the vine broke, they would be separated and they would make their camps on those shores for the duration of, of um, this event for, for finding uh, their families or their, their, their meeting. Um, so they, they gathered, Settled for 
two or three days on the shores and they created their fires, they went about their, their natural duties and responsibilities for, for their families. Um, they took care of their own. Um, and the, the younger, the young man said, on this day and for three days or four, you can go out into the woods and whatever unusual event happens, whatever you see, bring that back and we'll discuss that to the young man. So one, one elder woman went to the, to the river and was dipping her bowl into gather water for, for cooking and she heard a noise behind her and she turned around and, and there was a wolf just standing there watching. And she didn't move, she just watched, observed. The wolf didn't do anything, just watched, watched the woman and eventually went off into the woods. Um, so the, the elder woman went back and told him what, what she had experienced that was unusual. And uh, that's just one, one incidence of the elder that recognized the wolf. Other elders had, had also seen unusual events. Um, one seen a hawk, the here on the side. And they all have stories as to what they seen, what they were doing um, during their daily, their their chores. Um, once all of, all of the families had gathered, the elders they spoke to um, this young man, and they had discussed of what you had seen. Some didn't see anything, and um, through the discussion with the families. What they saw, the wolf, the deer, the beaver, is what their family, the entire family, would belong to. So once it was this, it was decided that they would belong to these these families, that was known as their clans. So that would be how they would dis distinguish between the families within each village and in the community. Um, they crossed, once they, they had established the clans, they had crossed the river again, the same way with the vine. They, they all went back to their communities and discussed it and said that we are now bear clan. Um, in the Oneida, it's wolf, turtle, and bear. Um, so those, those uh, clans were established as families. Um, the eldest, it's listed here as, as bear, wolf, and turtle with three subspecies as well, and we'll get into that a little later with their, I guess, somewhat roles. Um, it's not real clear as to what their role is. They're really, help, they're really helpers with the chief and clan mothers. So that's, that's the creation of the clans. Uh, we still have those today. Um, other members of the Haudenosaunee have other um, clans, and there, there's a breakdown of the Six Nations with their clans, and it's a common theme with the, the bear, turtle, and wolf. Um, Actually, 
um, looking out for future chiefs as well. Um, they facilitate the decisions for the plan and, and send decisions to the chiefs, and the chiefs will in turn speak on behalf of each clan at a, a council meeting or a, a grand council. Um, and the clan mother also lives by the great law. Um, other responsibilities, they observe the chiefs, making sure that they're, they're living by the great law. Uh, they're responsible for everyone in their family. Um, like I was saying, it's not just one last name. Basically, there was, was no last names at that time, so everybody had one distinct Oneida name or, or Haudenosaunee name, um, and they were responsible for the list of those names as well. There's no duplication of names when it comes to uh, Oneida names or any other names as far as I'm, my understanding. Um, they settle disagreements within the extended family. They ensure that the entire family is following uh, the proper way of life and the way of, of the great law. And like I said, they're, they're keepers of the clan names and they also approve marriages. Um, the picture that's, that's here is actually from 1925. Um, the Onondagas had came, or Onondaga representatives came to this community and reestablished the chiefs and clan mothers uh, for this community. And this is a picture of that time with eight, eight of the clan mothers. The clans basically went from this time here uh, up to 1934 when the IRA, the Indian Org uh, Reorganization Act, basically did away with the clan system. That, that was the start of our, our uh, uh, Oneida Constitution and the uh, elected officials. This is a picture with the, the chief bestowies. Each nation is represented here. Um, these aren't actual chief addresses. They are tribal addresses. The chiefs would have deer antlers on the sides representing that they are in a chief position. Um, the only one that I know that doesn't have antlers is the Tuscarora, and that's the, the lower center. Uh, the chief role is also a life position. They're chosen by the clan mother. Uh, the chief will represent or speak on behalf of the clan in the council, within the tribe, or at grand council, which is the Six Nations uh, grand council. They also speak the Oneida language fluently. Uh, they have knowledge of, of the, the tribe and um, they live by the great law. Um, they also conduct all the ceremonies. Uh, responsibilities, they look after the next seven generations of the children. Um, they're an advisor and as I was mentioning, Bob Brown um, is born and raised in, in Thames, Canada, and he came to this community, and he he brought some of the, the clan, or not the clans, but the ceremonies back, and he's also a, a cultural advisor for cultural heritage. Um, he's a chiefs are also a servant of the people. They're usually the, the poorest in the, in the community, um, and they perform traditional marriages and burials. The, uh, this is the picture I was telling you about when the Onondaga representative came out to this community and reestablished the chiefs. Um, the names are listed for each each clan and the sub chiefs. I don't know exactly who's who. Uh, Loretta, our tribal historian, was looking at that, trying to figure it out, and she looked at it the other day and she says. There's 19 heads there, and there's only 18 names. And we were kind of assuming that one of the, the delegates uh, are from the Onondaga Nation. Um, as the previous slide showed, the, the headdresses for the, the United Chiefs, um, 
these headdresses are not our traditional. They're more satisfying the media at that time um, because basically stereotype. Uh, anybody who's non-traditional or non-tribal, when you when you ask for well, Indian, they automatically think of buffalo teepees in the war bonds. So it's a set up fake headdress uh, photo for for the news. Um, the long sheet, the legal size paper, shows the wolf, turtle, and bear clans. It shows the current clan mother, um, Dog Christian, under the wolf. It says sitting underneath there. That just means that she hasn't gone through a condolence ceremony. They have to go through the ceremony to act, be an official. Uh, clan mother chief and sub chief. Um, each of the chiefs, that's their their title, that's their name. Um, with each position, and it has their English name uh, underneath. There are some that aren't filled, and either they have passed away, and, and the clan mothers haven't appointed, or they haven't gone through. Uh, the ceremony to be considered the, the chief. But it shows the, the sub chiefs, again, the male and female uh, faith keepers, and they also had runners. Runners would run from community to community with, with messages, um, deaths in the community, meetings to establish um, that were going to happen within the clans. Uh, this is a slide showing our, our three clans. The wolf clan is considered the pathfinder, and the relationship between uh, the wolf and the turtle bear. The wolf is the cousin to the turtle and uncle to the to the bear clan. I put the, some of the attributes down there as well. Uh, the wolf is intelligent, and I put that in there not thinking of any one person, but they are wise anyway. Uh, they, they're listeners, they watch out, they're watchful, they have a sense of family, and they're cunning. Um, a role with the wolf clan, they are the pathfinders. Uh, on earth, they kind of lead the way in um, reaffirming the great law. Uh, it gives direction that life should go on, and again, everything is, is according to the great law. Uh, the responsibility is, is you know, in a meeting, the facilit facilitator of the meeting, and we'll get into some of the, the clan meeting rules, what, what their role is within that. Uh, traditionally, they will open and close a meeting opening with the Thanksgiving address, giving, giving thanks to all creation. Um, and they set the agenda for the clan meetings. These are the three subspecies, the gray wolf, the red wolf, and the timber wolf. And again, the sub-clan, uh, the sub subspecies are kind of right-hand right -hand members. Uh, to help the chiefs and the, the clan mothers. The turtle clan, uh, they're the elder brother to the bear clan. Um, attributes, they're, they're patient, they never give up, they're wise, they're respected. Um, Mother Earth, in, the, in our creation story, Mother Earth was created on the turtle's back. And uh, they represent a calendar. Um, if you look at the sections on, on the turtle's shell, there's 13 sections, which represents the 13 moons. And then all of the smaller, all of the smaller sections that go around it, there's actually 28. 
which there's 28 days in a cycle for each moon. Um, and they're, they're great caretakers of, of the earth. They, during a planning meeting, they acquire the, the information on the issue that's brought up. Three subspecies with the turtle clam, the mud turtle, the painted or sun turtle, and the snapping turtle. If you know anybody that's a tribal member that's really edgy or snaps, well, probably snapping turtle. Bear clam, keepers of medicine. Um, with everything that I've researched, there isn't a whole lot with the reward responsibility that I've found other than they're keepers of the sacred medicine uh, and the medicine societies. Um, they, they really keep the best interests of the nation and their, their clan. Subspecies, black bear, brown bear, and the yearling. The faith keepers, faith keepers are um, assistance with the clan mothers. Um, I had asked Bob earlier in the week how many faith keepers there can be. It can be unlimited. So any number of people can be a uh, faith keeper as long as they, they speak the language, know the ceremonies, uh, participate in, in, in the ceremonies. Um, there are two faith, faith keepers for each clan mother, one male, one female. Um, they promote the ceremonial ways and they uphold Haudenosaunee culture. And they're, they're spiritual, spiritual advisors. We have uh, Ron Hill, which is a cultural wellness uh, that also works with within cultural heritage. Uh, the responsibilities is they're in charge of the four sacred ceremonies, the Thanksgiving or drum dance, the feather dance, the peach chant, or the pers personal chant, and the peach stoney. Uh, they're, they're knowledgeable about the history and uh, they, again, they have similar duties to the Klan mother. Faith keepers in our community, Leander Danforth, which um, he works in the language house, uh, Kathy Delgado, uh, Turtle Clan, Art Senador, Forrest Barton, Maria Hinton, and Gail Danforth. And Bear Clan is Randy Tomatius, Tech, Scanador, Leanne Thompson, and Carol Helm. And I also mentioned um, Ron Hill. Ron Hill is also a uh, faith keeper. Last session they had, they had asked how come the wolf doesn't have two like the other the, like the other clans. And the reason being is there aren't a lot of wolf clan members that speak the language and perform the ceremonies. So um, they really watch out for who's interested in learning, participates in the ceremonies, and is real knowledgeable and willing to learn all of those. Um, the language, the culture, and participation. So right now we only have two in this community. Um, does everybody know what clan you are? I figured that one.
working in cultural heritage that I am not turtle clan. And reason being, my mom is not tribal, so the, the line is cut. Um, when that happens, there's a couple different things that you can do. Um, you can be adopted into a clan, and adoption can be either by a, a family, family member, a friend, you know, from a different clan. Um, you cannot be in the same clan as your father. Um, you can go to a, a clan mother or a faith keeper and talk to them, and they can they can assist you with being adopted into a clan. Um, and then again, once you talk to a faith keeper or a clan clan mother, which we don't have any clan mothers in this community, um, they can talk to you and, and find out more about your history and your family. Um, maybe they'll know some of your family with, with a claim you can do or be adopted into. Um, there are situations or circumstances that you can be adopted into your grandmother's claim. If you're on your father's side, if, you're, if your father is, is a tribal member. So you may be adopted that way as well. Generally, within the Atlanta community, um, adoptions, visitors, or anybody else that comes into the community will be adopted into the Wolf Clan. So that's that's kind of the clan that uh, myself and my, my boys were adopted into a couple of years ago. Um, and I say children can't be the same as their father, but um, as they get as my boys get older, we're all Wolf Clan, but they will be able to either grow up in the community and be adopted into Either the terror, turtle or the bear, um, but they will they will have to be adopted into one of the other two. So it's not a long process. It's it's really trying to find out who your ancestors are. Um, if you can find out three or four generations back what clan they are, and then we can kind of go from there. And, and we're working right now on genealogy of identifying clans as far back as we can. Um, the clan mothers do keep track of, of clanship, but they're, most of our, our clan mothers are in Thames, the Thames community in Omega, Thames in Canada. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. We're, we're working on identifying a lot of the clans in this community. So what if, uh, you know, my grandchildren are, I'm a turtle, so that means my son is a turtle. Mm -hmm. Now what about his children? They can't be turtle. No. Why is that? That's almost, that's almost like marrying, marrying into a clan. The same clans can't marry each other. Well, mm -hmm. traditionally they can't marry each other. But the clanship has to follow the mother's line. So if your son, your son's tribal, he's turtle, unless he's um, married to another tribal member, um, yeah, and he's in, he's in the same situation that I am. What if somebody gets adopted the I, it doesn't necessarily have to be the wolf. It can, like I said, it can be a member or a family member that's in a different clan of bear or the wolf. Okay, um, like say my father was bear, so the grandkids could go the bear. Could be, yes. Okay. That could be an option. Okay. Are there any other questions? This part of the, the presentation is getting into the, the clan meeting rules and preparing for next week with uh, hopefully a clan meeting. Um, if everybody's turtle, you're not, not traveling, not traveling. Welcome to the wolf clan. <laughs> um, but we don't have any bear clan here. So Dr. Carroll, which is going to facilitate the meeting next week with, with the operation and the understanding of the clan system, 
says it's okay to hop clans just for the exercise. So we'll have some participation with the three clans, um, the bear turtle and wolf, seeing as it's predominantly turtle, turtle clan. Unless you want to be bear. Call me bear clan. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, for the clan meetings, each member must sit within their respective clans. Uh, because we have a small group and it's majority turtle, and you're in your clan now anyway. Um, but next week for the meeting, we'll, we'll have this room over here set up. So once we create the agenda and, and the issue or the topic, then we'll, we'll break apart and, and have discussions uh, within the clans. Uh, one person, usually a male, doesn't have to be. Uh, necessary for, for this exercise, uh, is appointed as the speaker on behalf of their clan. One person will be the facilitator. This person will make sure that anyone who wants to speak is allowed to within the clan, and it's in parentheses, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, they will also help anyone who, who gets off the issue, because being tribal, <laughs> it's really easy to get distracted on on other, other issues or topics, and it just on and on. Um, one person will be the recorder, which means they take the notes um, for the speaker, um, and then they'll bring that back to back together for the, for the speaker during the whole plan session. Uh, only the speaker will officially get up and speak for their clan, and that's um, everyone in number two will be allowed to speak within their clan on the topic. But once we all come together, only the speaker will be able to speak when we all come together as one, and they're they're actually representing their clan. Uh, everyone will listen to that what is being being presented. Uh, the speaker may double check with the clan to ensure that everything is covered. Yes? Um, I, this list, I was wondering, Dr. Carol, what's her last name? Hernandez? Yes, yeah, she created this list. I think we've seen this around um, in the Number Hill Center before. Was, is this the traditional rules they always had, or was this something that was just kind of like created to work for meetings today up in like Number Hill um, when they have meetings there? Um, like specifically like the recorder, did they traditionally write everything down or? No, because our tradition is oral. Yeah. They have no, no writing. Um, not to say that they did or not, but maybe they couldn't. But um, as my understanding, these were created back with those, those times of the planship. Uh, each clan will discuss the issue and discuss possible solutions once the agenda is established. And the wolf clan will, will establish the agenda. Uh, each person will be allowed to, to talk within the clan without interruption. Everyone will speak respectively to anyone, to another, and use positive terms. Um, basically, no negativity, cutting down, saying that's not my deal or, or something. Uh, in order to have a voice, you must be at the meeting or you will send a representative. If a decision is made and you did neither, uh, the issue is close to you, basically you're giving up your voice during that meeting or, or the, the discussion to the topic. If you don't agree with the solution, you must provide an alternative solution. So those are, are some of the plan rules that we'll, we'll be using next week. This slide kind of will show the, the cycle or the routine of a clan meeting. The wolf clan will receive the issue and set the agenda. Once the agenda is set, they'll hand it down to the turtle clan and they'll discuss the issue. Um, they'll talk about solutions and once they feel that they have discuss everything that they can on the topic. They'll send it down to the wolf or to the bear. 
the mayor will do the same thing. They'll discuss the, the issue, discuss the, uh, the everything that the, the total plan has done. Um, and if there's anything that they feel is missed, they'll send it back to the total plan and they'll perform that whole uh, cycle again where they'll, they'll discuss the, the issue, the topic, the solutions. Once they feel that they've gotten everything right the, the next time, they'll send it back to the bear plan, they'll discuss it again. And then once the bear plan feels that everything is covered, the solutions, uh, then they'll send it back to the wolf plan. And um, that's where everybody will be a unanimous decision. Yes. Was this how things were done internally um, only, or was this how things were done to reach decisions and um, for policy for when they were meeting for the Horn of Shawnee meetings when they had D, they were guided by the Great Law of Peace? Yes, each, each one. Each plan, or not plan, but each um, nation perform this type of uh, uh, system. And then with the, the chiefs, they would also perform this before they went to Grand Council in Onondaga. Because the Onondaga is, is really the, the central, the fire keepers for the Haudenosaunee, and they would be the facilitators of, of the, the Grand Council. Thank <laughs> you. 